And breaking right now on sunrise, we're on scene of a deadly crash on Highway 62 near Crosstown. We learned about an hour ago that a state trooper was involved. The lanes in both directions here are closed right now. Jen has, Jen has been tracking this all morning and has some detours for you as you start that Monday morning commute. Yeah, and you're going to want to use those detours, Jason, because the last uh, word from Midnat is that this crash, because of the investigation here in 62, this stretch of 62 will remain closed until likely 7 this morning. Another hour here that it will be closed in both directions as they work to figure out what happened here. I want to real quickly, uh, before we get to some more images from the scene, show you where this stretch is. It's from 34th Ave to 28th Ave, just north of the airport there. If that is on your route, get yourself down to 494 instead. That's how you're going to get around this. For right now, though, we do want to show you some uh, new images from the scene. You can see just how violent this crash was. Authorities on the scene have confirmed the person who is driving this truck is dead. They crashed into the bridge on top of 62. You could see some debris there on top of that bridge. Obviously, a very significant crash. So we have learned this crash is fatal. We also know a trooper was involved in this crash. At this time, we do not know uh, how that trooper is doing, whether they were hurt, but we do see a uh, squad, a trooper squad car on scene that has damage to it as well. Again, though, 62 closed in both directions that stretch north of the airport for likely another hour. Now over to Guy with weather. Thanks, Jen. 25 right now feels like uh, 25, so it looks like the wind speeds have finally relaxed uh, a little bit on us this morning. And you'll see sunrise time right around 7.03. Hour by hour planner, clouds fill in. We'll wake up to a few peaks of sunshine and then clouds roll in mid and high level clouds. So maintaining some filtered sunshine at times, but not as sunny and bright as how things were looking Saturday evening. And of course, yesterday was beautiful. Hi today, just under 40. Coming up, I'm taking a look at that seven day forecast. I'm tracking things turning a bit more active later in the week. All right, guy, thank you. Also breaking this morning, we are following new details within the last few hours about a shooting in Brooklyn Center that left 16s hurt. Let's pull up a map here of where all of this unfolded. Police say they were called to this frontage road along the 5600 block of Brooklyn Boulevard. This was around 7 last night. This is not far from Northport Park. This is what the scene looked like last night after police responded to the initial report of shots fired. It happened near a building in which there's an office for the Girl Scouts and a vehicle with Girl Scout branding out there uh, appeared to have some bullet damage. Uh, police say they found more than 50 shell casings in a parking lot from three different guns. All six of the victims showed up at North Memorial to be treated, which is how police found out there were so many victims in the first place. The police told us they do not have anyone in custody for this yet. We're going to stay on top of this story, though, and we'll keep you updated. This morning, the South is recovering from a violent and deadly weekend of storms. Over in Mississippi, at least 25 people are dead after a string of deadly tornadoes, including an EF4 that hit the small town of Rolling Fork. Leaders say the town is destroyed, as you can see here, describing it like a war zone. This is just devastating. Governor Tate Reeves says this is the deadliest tornado outbreak the state has seen in 50 years. President Biden has declared a major disaster in Mississippi, ordering federal aid to help with recovery efforts. Meanwhile, people in Georgia are cleaning up the damage left behind by several tornadoes. Emergency officials say 80 to 100 homes are damaged. A state of emergency is now in place in response to the storms. Governor Brian Kemp plans to tour the damage out there today. So far, no reports of deaths from those storms. And unfortunately, Guy, it looks like more severe weather is on the way for those folks. There. Yeah, for some portions of Georgia, absolutely. And this is all a part of the same system uh, from Alabama, Mississippi from over the weekend. Those deadly tornadoes that continue to track their way eastward into portions of, of course, Georgia, as you just heard. And then again, later this afternoon, there's a slight risk for severe weather, which is a two out of five. Hail also being one of the biggest impacts there, which is kind of rare to see hail, hail uh, in this portion of the country just because of those low uh, freezing levels there. There in that portion. So again, you have hail, some gusty winds possible this afternoon. So it looks like uh, we're not saying goodbye to the severe weather just yet, but at least not looking as intense uh, as how things were looking over the weekend. Jason. All right, guy, thank you very much. 605 on the clock and this morning cities along the Mississippi River like Hastings are preparing for spring flooding. The National Weather Service says the latest flood outlook for the Mississippi and Minnesota is well above normal. Business owners like Jennifer McCleo of Lock and Dam Eatery says while they're hoping for the best, they're also preparing for the worst. 
we're lucky we're high enough, but there is, you know, it does start to cover our walkway and it covers some of the deck down there. Um, and it's just something you have to watch out for. The National Weather Service says patterns for the next week show a slow melting period through the end of March, but the threat of flooding depends on how much rain we get as we head into April. This morning, a Minneapolis North High School football player who was shot is out of the hospital. Kashmir Grineau's family posted this video on their Facebook page saying he was released Saturday night and is now back at home recovering. You're seeing video from the moment he walked out of the hospital. His mom says Kashmir was shot three times in his legs last Wednesday night in North Minneapolis. The police say so far no arrests have been made, but good to see Cash making his way out of the hospital there. In just hours, the state's trial against e-cigarette manufacturer Juul and tobacco giant Altria will begin. Minnesota is the first case to go to trial against Juul since more than a dozen states sued the company beginning in 2019. Attorney General Keith Ellison is accusing Juul and Altria of deceptive marketing targeting youth. Juul and Altria have denied those allegations. Jury selection begins today in Hennepin County District Court, and that trial is expected to wrap up by April 14th. Also in court today, Colleen Larson set to be sentenced in the shooting of a Minneapolis crime scene investigator. Larson pleaded guilty to aiding and abetting first degree attempted murder. She was charged with shooting Nicole Ford in April of 2022. Ford was the ex-girlfriend of Larson's boyfriend, Tim Amaker, and also shared a child with him. He was sentenced to 18 years in prison. Right now, officials in Hopkins are investigating what started an overnight fire in an apartment building. This happened around 3 a.m. yesterday in a building near Lake Street Northeast and Blake Road. Police say no injuries were reported, but the building did evacuate. Right now, the Red Cross is helping people who were temporarily displaced. After yet another leak at the Excel Energy nuclear power plant in Monticello, officials are holding a public meeting tonight to ease community concerns. After shutting down the plant Friday, Excel Energy and federal agencies promise the leaks are contained. Folks in Monticello say the leak is naturally the talk of the town and there are plenty of mixed feelings. I think it's gross and scary. I don't know why they didn't tell people sooner, it's, which makes it scarier, I guess. My worry was um, just for the fishing, honestly. I've trusted what they've told us. It would just be, they would bring a lot more credibility if they just would have said that right off the bat. I don't think people would have questioned much. And tonight's meeting happens from 5 to 8 at the Monticello Community Center. We got a live picture right now from Tokyo, Japan. In a, about five hours here, planes will once again fly from MSP Airport to the Tokyo Airport. MSP Airport and Delta Airlines are celebrating the return of the nonstop service. They're hosting a ribbon cutting and gate celebration send off for Delta Flight 121. Bringing back the flight marks a major milestone in MSP's pandemic recovery. Let's take you back outside here. A live look from our Skycam at 609. It was a beautiful weekend to get outside and enjoy that warmer weather, guys, especially yesterday. Yesterday was especially nice. Absolutely. Yesterday was nice. Saturday evening was nice. Uh, and also Friday. Friday was beautiful, too. When I got off of work, Friday was lovely. Uh, I did think Saturday morning in my neighborhood, some clouds kind of rolled in. And we did wake up a little cloudy, but it cleared up nicely. And, you know, uh, sad to say, temperatures won't be as mild and it won't be as bright today. But still, we'll see a, a little bit of some sunshine early. We're mostly clear right now. Feels like the actual air temperature and clouds will fill in later on. So periods with clouds as uh, front approaches will cool off come tomorrow. And we'll ta start talking about some flurry chances for tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow overnight. Some snow in southern Minnesota, but still all in all quiet weather concerns today. Not tracking any widespread systems to push through whatsoever today. Upper 30s, low 40s for the forecast highs. Lows tonight will drop to the teens. Skies try to clear up a little bit. That will allow temperatures to cool off. So tomorrow morning is going to be a little bit cooler than this morning. And then by tomorrow afternoon, afternoon high temperature is going to be slightly cooler as well. Average high 47 will be below that tomorrow. 36 some flurries possible. Otherwise snow overnight, but that looks to stay south. Wednesday, some nice sunshine, but cool. Thursday rain moves in rain to snow Friday into Saturday morning. Boom, nice little warm up on Sunday. 
All right, thank you guys. 610 is the time right now. We want to show you another live look from the scene. 62 near Crosstown, just north of the airport, still closed in both directions as this crash investigation continues. You can see there all the emergency responders on the scene and that traffic being diverted away from 62. We want to show you images of just how serious this crash is. Here is a truck which appears to have crashed into the overpass over 62. We've confirmed with authorities on the scene that a person in that truck has died. So this is a fatal crash. We also know that a trooper squad is also damaged, involved in some sort of wreck near that scene as well. We do not know at this point how that trooper is doing this morning. The big news, though, if you are a commuter and your commute this morning took takes you on that stretch of 62, that's going to be closed for at least the next 50 minutes or so, according to MnDOT, until 7 a.m. It's this stretch, as I said, just north of the airport between 34th Avenue and 28th, closed in both directions. So you're going to want to get yourself down to 494 to avoid that closure, because again, Jason, it's going to be a while yet before that's clear. That is true. So just make sure you plan ahead this morning, Jen. Thank you.